Hey guys, welcome back. So we are going to keep going on thermodynamic work. So in the past classes, we discussed the general term of thermodynamic work, which is the integral of PDV. Then we discussed the work in processes. Then today we are going to put all those things together and learn work in cycle then we are going to have some examples for you to practice so this is the plan then let's get it started all right then before we start let's briefly review what we learned before so work is the integral of pdv we are looking for a function p with respect to v and also, if the volume increases, we have a positive work. If the volume decreases, we have a negative work. Then if the volume doesn't change, then no work. Then also specific work, which is overall work divided by the mass. Then also work in processes. If it's isochoric process, then no work. The isobaric process means pressure is a constant. Then this is the formula to calculate work. We denote this formula as number one. Then if it's an isothermal process, then you can use either of the formula. Then we denote them as two. Then if it's a general polytropic transformation, then this is the formula. Then we denote this formula as number three. In the future, we are going to learn several cycles. So cycle means multiple processes, they are together, then they have the same initial and final state, and the whole thing can repeat. And we call those things as a cycle. So for example, for this cycle here, we have the process from one to two. It's process A, then two back to one, then that's process B. Then for process A from one to two, so volume increases, then we expect a positive work. So the work is also the area under the curve, which is this part here. Then when we have from two back to one, then the volume decreases, then we expect a negative work. Then the area under the curve is the work here. And now let's take a look at the signs of work in cycle. So if the cycle is working in the counterclockwise, we are going to have a negative overall work. And as the opposite, if the cycle is running in clockwise, then we are going to have a positive overall work. So as we said, then work is the area under the curve. So the cycle is running in a counterclockwise direction. So from one to two, the area here is a smaller, which we're gonna have a positive work, but the area here is a smaller than the negative work. So overall, it is going to be a negative number because the area here, which is the negative work, is greater than the positive work here. So overall work in this case is negative and it's a counterclockwise cycle. Then similar thing, if the cycle is running in the clockwise direction, then we are going to have a positive overall work because the area from one to two, which is a positive work, is greater than the negative work from two to one. So the overall work is going to be positive. Then before we move forward, I want to remind you our formulas. So if it's an isobaric process, we use formula number one. The isothermal process, we use formulas number two. Either one will be fine, depending on which state you know. 
Then if it's a general polytropic transformation, then we use formula number three. All right, then let's look at this example. It says a closed system with an initial pressure of 100 kPa and experiences a polytropic transformation that has a volume change from 2 meter cube to 1 meter cube and followed by an isochoric process, bring the pressure back to the initial. Then from 1 to 2 is a polytropic transformation. Volume decreases, so we expect a negative work. Then says 2 to 3 is an isochoric process. So isochoric means volume does not change. Then we're not going to have any work because no volume change. So 3 to 1 is an isobaric process. Then since the volume increases, then we expect a positive work from a 3 to 1. Then let's look at the direction here. So the cycle is counterclockwise. So we expect a negative overall work. Then the question is, find the work of each process and the work of the whole cycle. So we need to calculate the work of each process. So one to two is a polytropic transformation. So we are going to use formula number three. Two to three, no work because the volume change is zero. So no work. Then three to one, it's an isobaric process. So we use formula number one. Okay, so the first one is a polytropic transformation. Then this is the formula we want to use, formula number three. So in order to solve it, we need to know polytropic exponent, which they give it to us. The pressure and the volume at stage two and the stage one. So let's take a look what we know and what we don't know. It seems like we know the initial pressure and we know both the volumes. So we need to calculate the pressure at stage two first. So since one to two is a polytropic transformation. So from the definition of polytropic transformation, PV power two N is a constant. So we can have this expression here, then turns out to be P2 is the only thing that we don't know. So we can calculate P2 in this way. So with P2, we know everything here. Then turns out to be it's a negative work because volume decreases. The next one from two to three, so isochoric process, no volume change, so no work. Then the last one is from a three to one, which is a isobaric process. So we use formula number one. Then we know the pressure and all volumes. Then this is the work since the volume increases. So we have a positive work. Then the last one is the work of the whole cycle. You just add all the work from each process up then this is the work of the whole cycle since it was a counterclockwise cycle. So we expect a negative work here. So this is this problem. Then here is an exercise which is very similar with the last example. So the pressure here is still 100 kPa. Then you can practice and try this problem on your own. All the solutions, they are over here. All right, then let's take a look at another example. So it says a piston cylinder device contains a 0.15 kilogram of air initially at two megapascal and 350 degrees C. So one megapascal is a thousand kilopascal. Then the air is first expanded as a thermally to 500 kPa. 
So from one to two, it's an isothermal process, then compressed polytropically with a polytropic exponent 1.2 to the initial pressure. Then finally compressed to the initial state. So it's an isobaric process. Then still calculate the work of each process and also the overall work. Then let's take a look. So first of all, let's think about thermal EOS. So we need to know substance and the phase. So substance is air. So the phase is going to be in gas phase. Then we can use ideal gas law everywhere, which is great. Then let's see what we know. So at stage one, we know the pressure and the temperature. Wow, then we know everything at stage one. Then at stage two, we know the pressure. That looks like we know the pressure everywhere then. The pressure one and three, they are the same. Then pressure at two, it's 500 kPa. Then for this cycle, so one to two, volume increases. So we expect a positive work. Then two to three, volume decreases. Then we expect a negative work. Then three to one, the volume decreases again. So we still expect a negative work. Then since this cycle is running in a counterclockwise way, then we expect a negative overall work. So let's take a look at the solution. Okay, then one to two is an isothermal process. So we use formula number two, work equals to PV times natural log V2 over V1. Then we need to know all those things. So at stage one, we know everything, but so far we don't know the volume yet. Then a good thing is we can use ideal gas law all the time. So PV equals to RT. So we know the initial pressure and the temperature since it's air. So we can actually calculate P times V. And also since we know mass, which is 0.15 kilogram. So if we times mass on both sides, then turns out to be we can calculate P1, V1 here. Then R T is this expression. This is a gas constant for air. Then the temperature, don't forget to add 273. Then this is R T. The next one, we need to know V2 over V1. Either we need to know each individual or we need to know the ratio. Then since we can use ideal gas law everywhere, so we are going to apply ideal gas law in stage one and the stage two. Then turns out to be, we can get the ratio V2 over V1 is going to be the pressure ratio as the opposite. Then it's four here. Then we can plug in the 26.82 and the four here. This is the work from one to two. The next one is two to three. It's a polytropic transformation. Then we need to use formula three here. P3 V3 minus P2 V2. Then it looks like we know all the pressures. The pressure P3 equals to P1. Then we need to calculate both the volumes, V3 and V2. So first of all, from one to two, it's an isothermal process. So P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. Then we can put it here. Then we can calculate a V2. Turns out to be this number here. Then from two to three, it's a polytropic transformation. So PV power to N is a constant. Then we have this relation here. Then turns out to be V3 is the only unknown. Then when we plug numbers in, we can calculate V3 here. Then we know V2 and V3. Then we know all the parameters here. Then we can plug them in. Turns out to be this is the work from two to three. 
then since the volume decreases, so we have a negative work. Then the last one is from a three to one, it's an isobaric process. So we use formula number one, and we know all the parameters, then plug them in, this is the work, and still a negative work. Then the last one is the overall work, you just add all the work from each process together, then this is a overall work and still a negative number because it's running in the counterclockwise direction. And also we have a homework problem that you can practice and it's pretty similar with our example. Then you can check your answer here after you're done. All right, then this is all we have for thermodynamic work. Hope you learn a lot. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.